Ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens if you destroy a black hole. My channel, Kuzgazad in nutshell. Yes, another Kuzgazad video and another black hole video. How many has he made so far? Yeah, you can never run out of topic about black hole, can you? It's always like, first of all, this is gonna be like, look, I don't know if this is possible or not. But I'm just gonna assume that this is like one of those like far out theories type of videos. Like, let's say if you can do this and this and can destroy a black hole or something. Because I'm pretty sure I don't, I don't know any uh, real way that you can destroy it. But yeah, it's going to be a fun video. Remember, if you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe. So I know which type of videos to react tomorrow. I'll love anything scientific. I'll love reacting to because of that. Vsauce too, I guess, whenever Vsauce uploads. But yeah, that's what you Black holes can destroy everything. But can they be destroyed? What happens if we push physics to the absolute limit, maybe even breaking it and the universe in the process? Let's create a tiny black hole about Break the mass of our moon in the Kurzgesagt labs and try to rip it apart. Experiment 1. Nuke it. Big booms break things, so to set the mood, let's Not explode really. the world's entire nuclear arsenal around our black hole. Boom. Black holes swallow whatever crosses their event horizon, matter and energy. I mean, it swallows star, right? I mean, the best nukes we have is, let's just say, fusion nukes, right? Thermonuclear nukes. Uh, those are like, un, you know, unstable uh, reaction. Well, stars are stable reaction, but in the end, both are fusion. If we can swallow stars, our nukes are not going to be much, is it? And since E equals mc squared, all the energy that enters a black hole increases its mass. The mass of a black hole is proportional to its size, so as we nuke our tiny black hole, it just gets bigger and more massive. Experiment 2. Antimatter. Matter and antimatter annihilate each other. What will happen if we throw a moon's mass of antimatter at it? Unfortunately, when an object enters a black hole, the black hole will completely delete its past identity, whether it's made of matter or of antimatter. Black holes only care about gravity, which only depends on the total mass energy of an object. And the mass of a particle is the same as its corresponding antiparticle, so throwing an anti-moon has the yeah. same effect as throwing a moon. Yeah, I was about to say that, like, you know, a uh, black hole rip apart everything, even the quarks. So I guess at that point, does it even matter, ma ma you know, if it's antimatter or matter? And let's say it is, like, you know, there's a, everything inside the black hole is like normal matter. You throw some form of antimatter in it. At, at best, what's gonna happen is gonna be colossal explosion inside, I guess, even if that can happen. Colossal explosion inside and like E equals mc squared, the energy is released, still gonna have the same mass and black hole will get bigger. The black hole just gets more massive. This deleting ability of black holes is pretty interesting. It means that despite their size and power, black holes are, in a way, similar to elementary particles. An elementary particle like an electron is an extremely simple object, fully specified by just three numbers, its mass, spin and charge. And amazingly, the same is true for black holes. They have a mass, they can rotate and carry an electric charge. Once a black hole forms, it doesn't matter if it comes from a collapsed star. That's the best thing about the physics, right? Uh, smallest thing can have similarity with the largest things. That's how easily is it traceable, I guess. An anti-star or a banana, it will always be fully described by those three numbers, nothing else. But if a black hole is basically a weird particle, could we destroy it with an anti-black hole? Experiment three. It's not a particle. Anti-black hole. How exciting. A particle has the same mass as its corresponding... I mean, like I just said, if black hole is like just a normal matter black hole, it has normal matter inside. If an anti-black hole has anti-matter, you know, matter inside, same thing. They would basically collide. Let's just say all the thing that is inside of them, you know, explodes. Even though it rips apart, you know, even the quarks. So I don't know if that would even happen. But at best, it would just basically explode and convert into energy. Energy would have the same mass and would just get twice as big. Bonding antiparticle, but opposite charge. Since a black hole has mass and electric charge, its corresponding anti-black hole should have the same mass and yeah. opposite electric charge. What if we make them collide? Sadly, the charge will just add up and cancel out. So after the collision, we'll just get a new black hole twice as massive with no yeah. charge. Okay, we need to think bigger and stretch physics harder. Experiment 4. 
destroy the event horizon. It's true that a black hole can carry spin and charge, but even for these crazy objects, there are limits. If the spin or the charge of a black hole becomes uh, right. too large, By something it. really weird will happen. The event horizon will dissolve. Yeah, if you're being too pedantic, this word feels really weird, like dissolve. First of all, event horizon is not a real, a really a thing. There's only singularity, right? But the gravity is so strong, there is a certain area. Beyond that, you can't see anything. Even the light can escape, and that is what event horizon is. But it's not really a thing, right? Singularity is a thing. So if you spin it really, really fast, like way too fast, then basically you can, you know, you can go all the way to sing, you know, singularity and everything else would not be there. Like event horizon would not be there because it's spinning that level of fast. Because the real thing is singularity. Everything around it is just like, there's a, you know, I guess, diameter of limits. I don't know. In a simplified way, we think of black holes as hiding a singularity inside an infinitely compressed mass with such strong gravity that absolutely nothing can escape from its surroundings, not even light. Mm. This is why a black hole looks like a black sphere of nothingness. The event horizon is the outer edge of this ultimate prison. Cross it and you'll never be able to come back. But when a black hole rotates, it works a bit like a spinning washing machine. It's as if the rotation wants to repel nearby objects and push them out of the black hole, which doesn't happen because its gravity is so strong. But if the rotation gets too fast, this effect will win and the event horizon will disappear. Nearby objects won't... Basically, that's how orbits work, right? Uh, sun want to pull, pull, you know, pull everything inside, but the more faster the object, you know, moves, obviously it becomes orbit. If it moves more faster, it will basically shoot out of the solar system. It's basically the same thing. If it's spinning at like just just the right rate, it would just stay there, right? It wouldn't go close to singularity. If it's spinning even more faster, it would just shoot out. Like, you know, event horizon would disappear, I guess. ...be imprisoned forever anymore. The same thing happens with the electric charge. Make it too large, and our ironclad jail will break open. If we manage to destroy the event horizon, the singularity would still be there, and objects would still naturally fall towards it. If you hit it, you would still die horribly and quickly. But the vicinity of the singularity won't be an inescapable prison anymore. You could get as close as you want and come back. This should count as destroying the black hole. <laughs> Can we do it? Experiment five: overfeeding. Missing All we have to do is about. to overcharge or overspin the black hole. We could do this by throwing objects with a small mass and a lot of charge or angular momentum, so that the charge or spin increases faster than the mass. We have to overfeed the black hole until it reaches the point where it breaks open. However. Whether you can actually do this is the subject of passionate argument among oh, physicists. Yeah. Think of a charged black hole. Equal charges repel each other, and the more of the same charges you squish together, the more they push back. So let's say that we have a negatively charged black hole, and we want to overfeed it with electrons, for example, whose charge is far larger than its mass. The electrons will feel an electrostatic repulsion, and the more electrons we throw, the larger the negative charge of the black hole will be, and the stronger the repulsion. But once we reach the upper limit, the electrostatic repulsion will be so strong that it won't allow any more electrons to come in. Mm, but the main thing here is the like collapsing gravity. Won't that overcome everything? Whether it's like, uh, how, doesn't matter how many negative charges are there or positive charges are there. This is like one of those things like, you know, if you know, if this means this, then this must mean the similar thing. It's tracks type of thing. That's how lots of time, you know, th theoretical physicists can put down things on the paper, but it has no meaning in real physical world, right? Uh, you know, theories tells us a lot of things, like you know, tachyons and things like that exist, but it really doesn't. It can't, right? So you know, this is a real issue. Like on paper, you you can hear a very crazy theories out there. But there are real tangible physical limitations that stops that, right? Uh, people say math tell ma math tells this, but you know math isn't always true in physical world like that because it doesn't account for a lot of physical limitations, right? So this feels one of those things. Uh, I can see how certain scientists debate over this. At this point, the black hole will refuse to be overfed. With the spin, it's similar. Once the black hole reaches its upper limit, it won't gobble more spin. But some scientists have discovered what looks like a loophole. If an instant before the black hole reaches the limit, we throw the right amount of matter in in just the right way, it looks like we could actually overfeed it. Most scientists are skeptical, but let's yeah, get it's a try one of those anyway. things. I don't think. 
The end. Breaking physics. There is a catch, though. The event horizon of a black hole hides the singularity. So destroying the horizon would leave us with a naked singularity, one that is not hidden by an event horizon. And this poses a problem. It could mean the end of physics as we know it. How? There's a big dirty secret about black holes. Contrary to widespread belief, the singularity of a black hole is not really at its center. No, it's in the future of whatever crosses the horizon. Black holes warp the universe so drastically that at the event horizon, space and time switch their roles. Once you cross it, falling towards the center means going towards the future. That's why you can't escape. Wait a minute, what? Doesn't, doesn't, this explanation feels a bit out there. Like, obviously, singularity is in the center of it. Like, okay, the gravity is way too strong. And we know time, gravity affects time. Like, every atomic process gets slowed down if you're close to really strong gravity, right? So, whatever thing is going toward the, you know, basically singularity, every world around it will sped up really fast so it will kind of go in the future in that way so outside observer will see that nearly stop whatever's going you know close to singularity but that doesn't mean it's in the future it's not there that's just like that's not physically possible right so i don't know and if and first of all if the event horizon goes away singularity would still be like pitch black it's still a black hole it still sucks things in right so it would be like it, now it doesn't have an event horizon so you can't see it right so it would just be darkness before you know you won't see until somebody just goes inside and just disappears right and now uh, you know since it disappears whatever thing goes inside and disappears you can't observe it so you can know it but if you could observe it it would look like whatever went inside just froze in time right because of this kind of gravity effect now whatever thing went inside if it can if it still exists if it didn't uh, got break down in quarks or whatever would see the world around it like speed up like infinitely fast like I don't even know how to explain it, but yeah, but this is all weird theories because whatever goes inside it will be crossed down to quarks or even less than that. So yeah. Escape. Stopping your fall and turning back would be just as impossible as stopping time and traveling to the past. So the singularity is actually in your future, not in front of you. And just like you can't see your That's own future, you won't it. see the singularity until you hit it. But you also can't hit something that's in your future, only sort of experience it, like you'll experience your next birthday when it happens. The singularities that are in the future are not a problem because we can't see them or interact with them. But a naked singularity would be in front of us. Basically, time is relative when you talk about this kind of a cosmic events. That's why it feels confusing when he explains these things. But it's basically like I said. For all of us to see, what would we see? Well, the whole point is that it's impossible to know. A singularity is a region of infinite gravity, and gravity is the bending of space-time. At a singularity, the bending is so radical that the fabric of space-time is literally broken. Space and time don't exist anymore. Yeah, I guess we would see end of time, right? Because let's just say black hole takes Google year uh, to, you know, go away, right? And like I said, it, it's, time would speed up infinitely. So I guess we would just reach that point, like how photon basically comes out of the sun and immediately hits whatever object hits because it doesn't feel that time, right? Because it's traveling at speed of light. It would be something similar to that. We would just hit end of time or something. This means that you can't predict anything since predicting means making a forecast about where and when something will happen. But where and when have lost their meaning. So we have an unpredictable thing with infinite gravity and therefore infinite energy. This means that anything could come out of it for no reason, from a pile of bananas to lost socks or a solar system. Predictability, I mean, come on, not in that physics as we know it, would break down. We think that singularities should exist in nature because we can prove that under very general conditions, gravitational collapse leads to the formation of singularities. However, scientists think that nature forbids the formation of naked singularities. Something enforces the creation of an event horizon around them to prevent their insanity from infecting the rest of the universe. Without event horizons, physics may not make sense at all. So although black holes have been portrayed as the ultimate monsters um. of the universe, they may actually be the heroes that keep us safe from the madness of singularities. So if we do destroy the horizon... This is like saying like if we go faster than the speed of light, everything would destroy itself. That's why we can't go faster than the speed of light, 
right? So I guess event horizon has to be there. It's impossible to get rid of it. Any physical limitation, like he said, like you can't spin it faster than, you know, something that would cause event horizon to disappear. You can't go to that speed. Your black hole can't spin at that speed or something like that. There, there has to be some kind of physical limitation, right? Uh, if, if this is true, like you can't have naked singularity. But then again, like I said, naked singularity could be just be like a pitch black dot, just like a black hole is, but it just doesn't have event horizon. But as soon as you hit it, you directly hit, uh, you know, uh, singularity. And singularity, like I said, is just like going to be infinite time and infinite space. So basically, you just hit end of the end of the universe or whatever, or the next phase of universe, right? Because black hole dies the last thing. So you, just like how photon, you know, releases from the star and hits, like let's say your skin, it won't feel that travel. You won't feel the end of time. We might destroy the fundamental rules of the universe. You know what? Let's not do that. Conclusion the safe option. As far as we know, there's just one safe method to destroy a black hole. Wait. All black oh, holes yes. emit tiny particles, a phenomenon called Hawking radiation. This process causes them to slowly lose mass until they eventually evaporate, leaving behind no horizon and no naked singularity. The time it takes for a black hole to completely evaporate depends on its mass. For our mini black hole the size of a speck of dust, it will be about 10 to the power of 44 years. 10 billion trillion trillion times the present age of the universe. So is it possible to destroy a black hole? Yes, we just have to wait. But you don't have to wait yep, that there you long. Go. There yeah, people go to uh, brilliant.org forces not shall and support this channel. This is like one of the wacky uh, theorist type of things. But like I said, right, uh, there are... Uh, a lot of theories out there like math tells us this but doesn't necessarily translate into reality because they don't take into account a lot of limitation that might be there we don't know of it right like i said tachyons and things like that but that you know there are real limitations that stops that but yeah so what if you destroy a black hole like literally destroying a black hole nothing like that exists right now so it's just like waiting right like like he said, 10 to the power of 44 or 10 to the power of 100, Google is whatever. But that would be the, like, you know. <laughs> and I think if you hit the singularity, I, first of all, what does that, what do you mean you? You're broken down into information. You're not you. Nothing is nothing, is nothing right? It's just information. And that information will die out by the end of time. And, uh, you know, like photon doesn't feel time. Anything inside the singularity won't feel time, right? It's just like photon, it won't feel time. Right, so for whatever inside the singularity might as well be the end of time because you would just reach there. Time wouldn't be a thing there. That's the whole point. But yeah. yeah. Right, people, that was uh, what happens if you destroy a black hole by channel. In a nutshell, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.